We now move to the next type of feather, and that is the down feather. The down feather. Down feather. The down feathers are located all over the body. All over. As you are um, uh, removing feathers from the hen, you will see that there are those feathers which are evenly distributed all over the bird. Those are the ones we are calling the down feathers. And they appear just like we are seeing there. For them, they are the whole feather is soft and fluffy. Soft and fluffy. Then the feather has a shaft or a ratchet. But the shaft or ratchet is thin and short. It is not as long as in the quill and the contour. For it, the shaft is short and the bubs are loose. They are not interlocked like in uh, the quill and the contour. Meaning if we get a question asking us to compare a down feather with either a quill or a contour, we are in position two. This one has three bubs. The other ones have interlocked bubs. Here the ratchet is short. There the ratchet is long. Then these ones are soft and fluffy and distributed all over the body. They are distributed all over the body. Moving on, what is the function? What is the function of the down feather? Down feathers basically insulate the body against heat loss. They insulate the body against heat loss. Remember, we've seen those general functions of feathers. Adaptations. What enables them to insulate the body against heat loss? One we are noting that equally, they also have a short quill such that the feathers are attached close to the body. Being attached close to the body, that prevents heat loss. They also have loose bulbs. I think we can see the bulbs. They are loose. They are not attached. They are not fixed into each other. Now, the bulbs being loose, it enables them to trap a layer of air, which air is an insulator, thereby bringing about insulation. They also have a flexible ratchet to easily bend and trap air. So that is about the down feather. Lastly, we have the feathers known as the philopleums. Now, after removing all the feathers on the hen, there are those hair-like structures. They are like hairs that remain. In fact, it may be hard for you to remove all of them. Those small ones, slender, hair-like, are what we are calling the philopleums. Philoplium. Philoplium. Therefore, the fourth type, they are what we are calling the philopleums. They are slender, they are hair-like. They have tufts at the end, at their tip, there are tufts on them. But they have bulbs which are free. The bulbs are free. They are not interlocked. They have free bulbs. So that is about the feathers, just like we have seen. That is about the feathers. We've seen that there are four different types of feathers. However, these feathers have upper form general functions. We've seen the general functions of the feathers. In addition to the general functions, each feather also performs particular role and they are adapted for those particular roles. So the main ones, the quill, the contour, the down, and the philoplume, just like we have seen them there. Remember, we are still looking at our topic of locomotion. Locomotion, movement of the whole organism from one place to another. We saw that organisms locomote because of different uh, reasons. 
to obtain food, mates, to reduce competition, to colonize new habitats. You remember all those that we looked at. Therefore, we've currently seen locomotion in insects. We have also seen locomotion in birds. We now move on and look at locomotion in fish, in fish, in fish. We have seen fish. Some of you have eaten fish. How do fish locomote? What is the habitat of fish? Fish are found living in water. Therefore, the habitat is aquatic, aquatic water. When you remove fish from water, they die because they cannot obtain oxygen from air. Therefore, they are found living in water. But in water, where they are living, they locomote. They move from one place to another. Equally, in water, they locomote by swimming. They swim. And we are going to see that swimming is brought about by a set of fins together with a set of muscles which we call the myotome muscles. Swimming is as a result of the action of fins and the action of muscles called the myotome muscles. Before we go into the details of how fish locomote, let's understand the structure of fish because you're going to talk about these parts. Look at that fish. It has a mouth. It has the nostril. It has the eye. Mouth for feeding. Nostril for smell. The eye for sight. It has scales covering the whole body surface for protection. We are going to see that these scales overlap each other and they face backwards for protection. It has the operculum. The operculum covers and protects the gills inside which gills are for gaseous exchange. Then it has the fins. On the upper part, the dorsal fin. Behind, behind, posterior, the caudal fin or the tail fin. Down on the ventral, we have the ventral fin and the pelvic fin. Ventral down, dorsal upper. Then on the sides, we have the pectoral fin. Pectoral fin. When you look at this fish here, we can see those parts. The mouth, the eyes, the nostrils are there. It has the scales, you can see them. It has the caudal fin or the tail fin. The dorsal fin up, the ventral fin down. The pelvic and the pectoral fins. Then inside there is a lateral line which is reflected here. So those are the parts of fish. The parts of fish. Remember, we want to look at locomotion in fish. And we are noting that it is basically brought about by the fins together with a set of muscles called the myotome muscles. Myotome muscles are arranged on either side of the lateral line. If this is the lateral line, one side is a set, the other side is another set. Those muscles are called myotomes. And they are antagonistic. Do you remember the meaning of antagonistic? When one set contracts, the other one relaxes. When this one relaxes, this one contracts. So those are the parts of fish. Remember like we have seen, fish move by swimming in water. When you look at that image of fish, it moves in water by swimming, by swimming. Therefore, what are the adaptations of fish to swim in water? What features enable fish 
to move to locomote by swimming.